Questions? Okay. Don't forget your uh, second quiz is due Tuesday. Um, how's some homework and stuff going for y'all? Getting through it? Get hung up on anything? Give me a holler. Today, today we are going to talk about a rather central notion in linear alpha. It's one called linear independent, linear dependent, linear independent. Uh, the limit to start off and tell you what this is all about and then how it connects up to the, what we've been doing so far. Um, we'll say D1, D2, BK, and RN is linearly independent. Yeah. The equation x1 d1 plus x2 d2 plus x k d k is the zero factor. By the way, I can I don't care what the vectors we are, I can always solve this by letting all the x's be zero, can I? Everybody agree with that? That's always solvable by let all the x be zero. If that's the only way to do it. We say that the set of vectors is one of your So the only solution, the only way to get the zero vector out of these things is by letting all the constants x i be z. We say that um, the set vector is linearly dependent of So it's either linearly independent or it's linearly dependent. It's linearly independent if any linear combination of the vectors being the zero vector means that all the constants have zero. It's linearly independent otherwise. So another way to say linear dependent is Numbers x one, x two, x k, not all seem to be some of them can be zero, but not all of them. Now, actually, this has uh, an important connection with these equations we've been working through. And let me look at an example and see if we can make that connection again. So here's an example. So 
So these will all be vectors in R3. Okay, so I've got these three vectors. What do y'all think? Those three, linearly independent, or linearly dependent. Got to be one or the other. How many of you think independent? How many of you think dependent? Well, the youth, you need to get out and vote. Uh, so let's let's find out, shall we? So we have so let's write that in terms of the particular audience. So we have. X one, X two, three is equal to the zero vector, and in R three, the zero vector just means three zeros. Now, this solve on this side, let's see what this is. Maybe, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's all x1, x2, x2, you're all equal to zero. They all have to be zero. Now, it looks maybe it looks a little confusing here because everything got split up into a big mess. However, can I rewrite this? Can I rewrite the left side of that that one? Everybody okay with me? Oh, how about then I try it? Now I'll just play match game. So these three vectors are linearly. When your uh, independence is very important notion that we are going to see over and over and over again. And let me make a connection here. Let's look back at this bit of the computation, right? What are we trying to do? We're trying to find solutions x1 plus x2 plus x3 times these things is equal to the zero vector, right? That's a system of equations. Haven't we been doing this crap with augmented matrices all the time, right? So let's re-examine this. Suppose I have this. This is sort of the key equation for linear independence, right? For linear independence, I need this to mean that all the multipliers, all the xi's have to be zero, right? Here's another way to think of this. Take each of these column vectors, V1, V2, all the way up to VK, and make a matrix out of it, right? Let A be this, and let X equal X1, X2, XK. Finding solutions, let's call it one here. To equation one up here is equivalent to finding 
solutions to the matrix equation a x is the zero. Wait, okay. Because this is the way that we wrote this. I mean, really, this right here corresponds to this this vector equation, which corresponds to this system of equations that we got right here. So here's another one. Thank you. Given the vectors P1, P2, <laughs> PA, and matrix A, that you make just out of these vectors just by making them columns, then the set of vectors. D1, D2, D K is a linearly independent set. If and only if AX equals zero has only uh, the zero vector. So, if you want to think about this in terms of equations or matrices, then what does it mean to be uh, linearly independent? The vectors, throw them into a matrix and try to solve that equation there, AX equals zero. AX equals zero always has the zero vector as a solution, which is what we pointed out earlier, that you can plug in all the zeros to this and it works. But they're linearly independent if that's the only solution. So now you can do things like row reduce it and look at things like pivot columns and so forth and determine things are linearly independent or not. Everybody okay? Okay, so let's look at um, another example or two here. Is the set, let's say, one, zero, one, two, minus one, four, and three, one, one, linearly. Well, you can try to solve the equation x1 times this plus x2 times this plus x3 times this uh, equals zero and see whether that forces everything to be zero. We're going to look at this from this point of view, which is the problem of that. But A. Okay, so make this matrix out of column vectors. And so let's augment this matrix and go for it. Okay, first thing I'm going to do, um, I'm going to use that one in the upper left to kind of take care of business. I've already got a zero here, so I'm going to do that. Uh, you know, I love the swing genius case, right? Because no matter what I do, row operations, I'm always, that last column is always going to be all zero, right? Got to love that. Negative one times this. Zero, that's a two, 
times a minus two, and that's a zero. And so, by the way, any guesses? Yes. Well, since the last row, then maybe it's going to be right. The last row is actually multiple. This one that means I'm going to get a row of zeros. What, what's going to happen when I have a row of zeros here in a homogeneous equation? <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna have at least one free variable, and so the answer is these will be linearly dependent. Multiply that by two and add it here. Okay. I just want to answer my my initial question at this point. I don't want to do any more work that's necessary. I'm a lazy, lazy man. But let me look. Uh, I, I don't have that row reduced echelon form yet, but can you tell me how many pivot columns are there going to be? Two, right? And I've got three columns total. What does that mean? So I'm going to have two basic variables on two pivot columns. One of them's going to be free, right? And what does that mean? Well, it's a homogeneous equation, so it's always consistent because you've always got at least zero for the solution. I've got one free variable, so there you go. Uh, there, these vectors must be so ample in any solutions. Uh, so uh, linearly deep in. And by the way, um, well, let's, let's actually take this now that we've answered the question. I want to explore this problem further and take it a, another step here. Uh, let's manipulate this a little bit further here. Okay, so what I've done so far is I've multiplied this middle row by negative one, I've left the bottom row alone, and also I'm going to take this and add it, uh, negative two times this plus this, and so, or I'm sorry, two times that plus that. So I'm going to get one zero five. Now this thing is in row reduced echelon form. Uh, so let's pick out solutions, right? Um, this equation means x1 plus 5, x3 is 0. And this middle equation, this middle uh, row, corresponds to x2 minus x3. So if I look to the solution, this homogeneous equation. The variable that corresponds to the pivot of the non pivot column, uh, that's the free variable, x3. So x3 is just doing its thing, sitting there and being free. Uh, x3 is equal to x2. And x1 is equal to minus 5x3. And then I've got so, so this is a solution for any x3. For example, if x3 is zero, I get the zero vector. If x3 is one, I get minus five, one, uh, minus five, one, one. If my x3 is negative two, I get 10 minus two, minus two. And notice, uh, right. Notice that what this is, if we go back to the original thing, is solutions for linear dependence equations, right? So 
let's just take uh, let's just take x three equals one and take the vector uh, minus five. And we'll sit back at this minus five. Plus one, it's no factor two. Plus one, and it's vector three one one. Well, we'll see what this gets. Let's see in the top row. I should have negative five and two and three and zero. I have zero minus one plus one. Zero, then minus five, the score is minus one plus one and zero. So here we have a non trivial way to add these vectors up and write it zero. All right, and that's what our solution is. <laughs> okay, any questions? <clears throat> yeah, so this does have infinite limits. Oh yeah, sure it does. Um, in fact, multiply this string by anything you want. Like for example, ten times this minus two minus two, that'll still be zero, right? Uh, if you multiply that by uh, by three, negative fifteen times the first one plus three times the second one plus three times the third one will still be zero. So there's infinitely many ways to do it. Okay. Uh, let me make an observation here. One of the factors. Set is a zero vector. Uh, then the set is linearly. Okay, so if one, so if I walk up to you on the street and give you a set of vectors and you look at it and you say, hey, look, one of those vectors is the zero vector, it's always, it's always, always a linearly dependent set. Anybody want to know why? Yeah. Because the zero vector is a linear combination of the zero vector. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that's sort of right. So this is, this is, this observation allows me to be a smart aleck. So suppose I have zero vector being one of those things. Can somebody write zero vector as a non trivial linear combination of this? Something becomes a zero vector plus something times. D2 plus something comes in there. Can anybody give a solution to this by filling in the blanks with not all zeros? Yes. Just multiply the zero vector by any random constant in the rest of it. Sure. Right. This is, like I said, this allows you to be a smart of one, for example, and then put zero is everywhere else and fill it very pleasing. So, right. So, if, if the zero vector is in there, it's always automatically a linearly dependent. Okay. So, let me ask you this. Uh, I'm going to do the first two cases of this, and then I'm going to give you a theorem to kind of tie everything together. Uh, when is a series? Linear. 
But these sets of vectors can be of any size. So suppose I just have B. When is that linearly independent? Was it? it always except when it's the zero one? That is correct. Always. Unless B has the zero one. Because if you have X times B equal zero factor. Think of it this way. Now suppose this is well, of course, this is X A one, X A two, X A. When is this zero thing? Well, every entry has to be zero. Everybody agree? So there's two cases. Either x is zero, which doesn't count, that, would, that already means it's linear independent. Or if x is not zero, what do you have to conclude about the a's? Every single stinking a had, if x is not zero, then every one of those a's has to be uh, zero, right? Which means the vector is zero. So any vector just by itself is linearly independent unless it's zero. Let me have Two Anybody want to take a stab at that one? Yes. Um, they're not multiple of each other. Or when one's not multiple of the other. There you go. So, actually, I want to take this from the point of view of let me ask myself the opposite question. When are two vectors linearly decent? Right. Are linear. Suppose these two are linear. Now we'll assume, just for ease, that B1, neither B1 nor B2 is the zero factor. Because we know that always makes for a linear independent set. Um, so let's suppose we have this equation for linear dependence. That means that one of these is not zero. Now there's only two of them. So can somebody explain why if one of these is not zero, then they both have to be not zero. Okay. Let's suppose that um, X1 is not zero, right? Suppose, it's zero. suppose X2 is zero. So now you've got this equation, right? And what does that mean? That means that X1 also has to be zero, because we're assuming both the vectors are zero, right? So in this case, because there's only two, 
both of these are non zero. So notice that x1 d1 is minus x2 d2. And since x1 is not zero, then b1 is minus x2 over x1 d2. <coughs> Now, what does this mean? This means that B1 is a multiple of B2. In fact, it's it's even okay if the X2 is uh yeah, if, yeah, if X2 is zero, it's still okay. Everybody okay with that? B1 is multiple of B2. And what does that mean geometrically? You want vector to be multiple of the other? It means they're on the same line. So if, for example, B2 is this, then B1 is multiple of this, so stretches it or maybe goes in the other direction, but these two vectors are on the same line. Right? So what does it mean for the vectors to be linearly independent? It means they're not on the same line. Yes, did you have a question? That's well asked. Right, right. So they're linearly dependent, they're on the same line, they're linearly independent, two vectors are linearly independent, and they're not on the same And in fact, here is a theorem that's going to help us sort of move forward with this. There. <clears throat> So we should have a set of vectors B1, B2, BK uh, in Rn. Is supposed to set as linearly dependent. Um, Well, actually, to do this this way. So, the set, the set of vectors in R n is linearly dependent if and only so one of these vectors is in the span. So this is a this is actually often a very good way to characterize linear linearly dependent sets. A set is linear linearly dependent if and only if one of the vectors in the set, one of them, happens you can write it as a sum of well, sum of uh, scaling sum of the others. It's a linear combination of the other. So actually, I am going to prove this for you because it's really just a computation. So suppose uh, B1, B2, K is linearly dependent. Then this means I can find X1. X2, Xn in R So I can find some numbers x one up to x k such that this is equal to zero. And what what about the what do I need to say about the x's?
consequences can be zero. They can be zero, but not all of them. Right? Not all. Of them. Yes. What's that? Now? Right. So this means I can find these numbers in R, not all zero. So it's this equation balances, right? Right. Let's suppose that I is not zero, which is why I wrote this in the outstation. So at least one of those coefficients, one of those x i's is not zero. Everybody okay with that? Now I want to isolate this by taking it over the other side. So I get x1, p1, all the way over x i minus one, p i minus one, x i plus one, p i plus one, x k p k is minus x i p k. Now, can anybody guess what's the final step here? Just divide by xi. And I know I can do that because it's not zero. And so if I divide by negative xi, I get vi is, this is a pain, but whatever, minus x1 over xi times p1 plus minus x2 over xi p2 minus xi minus 1 over xi di minus 1 minus xi plus 1 over xi di plus 1 minus x k over xi and so what we have, we have V I is in the span of all the other vectors, right? which is exactly what we said. If it's linearly dependent, so one of them, it can be written as a linear combination of the other. Notice this is a number times V1, number times V2. Notice we skip the I, all the way up and the other direction is easier. So if I want to be complete about this, I have to start here. Suppose the VI is in the span of the others. Now I need to show that this is a linearly dependent set. Well, this just means that di is a1 p1 plus a2 p2 plus a i minus one p i minus one plus a i plus one p i plus one. Okay. And if you bring this over here, you just get the same mess minus the I. And I know at least one of these coefficients is not zero. There it is, negative one multiplying that. And so it's very really deep in there. Okay. Any, uh, any questions? Yes. So the one example we did about 20 minutes ago, it was, I can wait the me or tell you the matrix that we did. It was the one, zero, one, two, negative one, four, three, one, one. That was, so those vectors don't look like multiples of each other, but yet it was, it was. Ah, uh, they're not, it's a linear combination, right? So for example, at the end of that example, what 
were the what were uh, what was the first one? So the first vector was one zero one, and then two negative one four, and then three one one. Remember how we did this? Let me make sure that I did that right again. Yeah, let me show you. So, for example, this one is a linear combination of the other two. It's like take that over the other side. Uh, right. And that's why it's different with with more than uh, with more than two vectors because yes, none of these is a multiple of the other, but this one is actually a linear combination. It's five times this one uh, minus this one gives you this one. Right? And actually, you can solve for any of this. For example, one zero one should be negative this, negative this, and then divide it all by negative five. Right. So, for example, I can take. The way I can do it is I can take two minus one four plus uh, three one one equals five one zero one. Right. And now I can divide by five. Uh, one fifth fifth. Any other questions on that? Okay, so let me make uh, and this is this is very it's kind of a, a simple observation. But it's totally worth making. So, there. Okay, so let me get my, let me get my variance here. What am I saying here? I've got k vectors, one, two, three, four, all the way up to k. And they're all in Rn. So that means that they're all towers that are in high. Right? So there's k of them and they're they're all in high. They're in Rn. Um, yeah. K is bigger than n. So that is, if the number of vectors is greater than how high the towers are, Right, uh, then the set is automatically linearly dependent. Yes. Is n just the number of rows in each vector? Uh, which one? Well, you're saying n is the is how high the towers are. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. So number of rows. The number of rows. Right, and it, it, there's only one column, and there's n rows. Right. Thank you. So if the number of vectors exceeds the number of rows, it's automatically a linearly dependent set. Now you may ask, well, Jim, what if it's the other way? What if, what if uh, the number of vectors is less than the number of rows? Is it automatically linearly dependent? No way. For example, I could just have one vector and it be zero. Right. So the theorem doesn't work the other way. I do know that if the number of vectors exceeds the number of rows, then it's linearly uh, dependent. Can you tell me why this is true? Yeah. 
That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So here's here's why this is coming. Build the matrix A out of these columns. And let me very uh, This matrix here has what? K columns and in rows. And so this. The set of vectors is linearly dependent if and only if AX equals zero as multiple solutions. In our case, it's the many solutions. But we have A has uh, at least one solution. So system is consistent. This is, of course, a homogeneous solution, which always has zero vectors. But also, A has uh, in rows and K. So the number of pivot columns how many pivot columns do we have well i don't know but can somebody found it for me yeah that's, that's, that's right so the number so ask yourself this so in this matrix say whatever it looks like how many pivot columns does it have well <laughs> It can't have any more pivot columns than the number of columns it's got, right? Am I agree with that? And K is less than uh I'm sorry. I think I got to turn around. How many how many pivot how many uh how many pivot columns can I have? So let me put it this way. So the number of pivots uh, is less than rows in, right? Because you can't have any more pivots than the number of rows. Do I agree with that? So if I have a matrix like this. So the number of pivots columns can't be any more than the number of rows, right? There we go. So now I this right. So the number of pivots is no more than n, which is less than k, which is the number of columns. And how many variables do we have? We have k variables. So there is at least one free variable.
so sad is when you're in because that one free variable guarantees that you're actually going to have infinitely many solutions. This is kind of nifty because, for example, if I give you these vectors right here, uh, one minus two, one minus one, zero points for one, Four zero one 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 two three four and five six seven eight. So the number of vectors exceeds the four rows it's got. So I don't have to do any computations here. I promise you, this is a linear we get to this. Okay. Any questions? All right. Well. You all have a good one and we'll see you next time.